WWFC. What does it stand for? Stay tuned and you'll find out. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Rockin' Age Woodshop. Now I know we were gonna finish working on the table saw cabinet, but something in my heartstrings was pulling at me saying that I needed to work on this Woodworkers Fighting Cancer Art Easel. That is what we are gonna focus on this week. This particular easel in my design features half lap joinery, half blind dovetails, and sliding dovetails. This is an all around woodworking project that you can practice and master the different ki kinds of joinery. So I'm gonna take you through the process right now. Well, my particular easel is a little different from both Mirror Mortals as well as the Wood Whisperer. I put a white board tray, because uh, it's easier to see things on a white background instead of a dark one. Uh, so if you have crayons or, or whatever that's lurking around here, uh, you'll be able to find it. Uh, it features a chalkboard, a little dusty right now, but, um, and then the other side is a white erase board. And this particular tray lifts and rests on the uh, rails that extend past the uh, legs itself. This, this is a half lap joint as well as up here. And when they extend past, I have a big groove cut out of the uh, side of the tray. So whenever it sits down, it falls into that particular hole and stays there. And then I've got a couple screws that lock in place. Let's just go ahead and start the project. All right, first we're gonna run this slab of pine through to make two inch legs. And we need to make four of them. They need to be two inches wide, 44 inches long. Okay, now we gotta cut the rails that are gonna go on the top and bottom. And according to the measurements that the Wood Whisperer has, they're 28 and a quarter inches long. Mine are going to be a little bit different because the way I'm constructing it, so I'm going to leave them oversized until I know exactly what it is, but they're still going to be two inches wide. Now we need to cut the sides for the tray that's actually going to hold the markers or whatever else that they're going to use. And they're going to be three inches wide according to the design. Now the tray fronts and the backs of each tray are going to be cut. They're also three inches wide. My rails, I left a little bit long so I can make sure that I had enough. What I'm gonna do is at the top and the middle where they join with the legs, I'm gonna make a half lap. But I want there to be overhang because I'm gonna kind of uh, put a chamfer on all the edges of that end grain. All right, it's time to do the half laps. And I have a piece of scrap here that I'm gonna test this on. So what I'm gonna do is make a half lap that is the exact width of the same piece, the adjacent piece. So if this was the leg, it's gonna intersect the rail and it's the same width as the rail itself. So we're gonna use a piece of scrap that's the same width as that rail and uh, it's going to be our guide spacer. Because what we're gonna do is make a cut right here, which will leave the half inch overhang that I want on either side. And we're gonna make a relief cut, then we're gonna remove this spacer and push it up against the stop block. However, what you need to take into consideration is the first cut is on this side of the blade. In order to make it the exact width for the uh, leg or rail, however you're looking at it, you need to be on the other side of the blade. So we're going to use an eighth inch uh, feeler gauge spacer or a brass space that I use to adjust the height of the blade. And we're going to put it in place and it will act as another gauge. This will push that line over to this side of the blade and it will be a perfect fit for this piece. We're gonna test it on a piece of scrap and see how we do. Now let's just see how they fit. All right, I believe we have it. Just a little bit of fine-tuned sanding in the joint will make it nice and flush, and then final sanding after that will make it even better. Okay, we're about to uh, cut the chamfers 
that are going to go on the ends of the rails and the top of the legs. Um, now the rails that are on the bottom aren't going to get a chamfer because they're going to get covered up and I'll show you how later. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and use our starter pin here on the router with a 45 degree chamfer bit and ball bearing and then just run it over the end grain and uh, put a slight chamfer on this. Now it's just time for a little bit of assembly. All right, we're just gonna set that aside to dry and then just assemble the other one. Okay, now the tray sides, uh, according to Mark's design that he uh, put together, as well as Woodworking from Mere Mortals, uh, I'm gonna leave mine the same as theirs and it is uh, 27 and 5 eighths. Now we're gonna do the fronts and the backs of each tray. We're gonna have to square off the ends and just make sure that uh, we don't get any nasty knots on the on the end simply because we're going to dovetail half blinds in the front and then do sliding dovetails in the back instead of a dado. I like it. Now we're just going to take a uh, 3 8 inch rabbiting bit and go over the insides of those easels to make room for the blackboard and whiteboard. Okay, now it's time to clean out the uh, section right here on the sides to make room for the jut out of the easel that this is actually going to bottom out on. Now I just gotta put it all together. Now we're just gonna cut the whiteboard to accept the trays to make the bottom and finish the tray out. Well guys, I went ahead and installed the whiteboard trays and just pinned them in place with pin nails. I also installed the chalkboard and the dry erase and put some uh, butt hinges up here at the top. Uh, I also put some locking screws right here for the tray and with it sitting in those uh, grooves right there, it always will register in the right place so the screws will never miss. So I'm very pleased. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this project. The half blind dovetails, sliding dovetails, and half lap joinery make this project a challenging one, but also a doable one by any stretch of the imagination for any woodworker. And uh, I hope my daughter enjoys this. Be sure and follow me on my uh, Facebook page, Twitter, all my social media so you won't miss a beat. And if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to it. All subscribers count, and uh, I can't wait to show you guys more. So please subscribe and share it with your friends. Post it on your Facebook page. Get my name out there. It will help immensely. Uh, until next week, guys, I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving, and uh, I will see you after the holidays. Take care. One on bottom. They're 28 and 3 quarter inches long. I believe. Maybe they're 28 and a quarter. Tray. And there's four of them. I'm gonna, I, I burped in that. That was stupid.